who just finished first place at Niagara Regional with Blue Andres. Uh, how are you feeling with that performance? I feel uh, tired, for sure, yeah. And I feel like this was a long time coming. I haven't played this deck in, in real life regional for the last year. I've been playing other decks. I played this I played this exact list at the Toronto Regional last weekend and I came uh, I, I lost the very last round and then I went X2 basically. So I played the exact same list today and somehow miraculously got lucky and won. So I'm glad. Uh, shout outs to my friend Nicholas for driving me here. <laughs> shout outs to all my yeah, Nick. group chat. Shout outs to TCG Player Infinite, the place I write articles on. Make sure to check out my articles. I wrote, the, I wrote about this exact list on my latest one about road decks and everything. That'd be cool to check it out. I even wrote about um, Kevin's Fluffle deck. It was pretty good. Like it's it's all gas. Like it's insane. Um, but uh, yeah, without further ado, I guess we'll get into the most exciting Blue Andres deck profile ever. Awesome. Gosh. Us and I'll link your articles down below. Yeah, yeah. So clearly, if you're not playing with these pod cards, you are insane. These cards make any deck more consistent. Max it on these. You don't need extravagance because extravagance extravagance is only good if they have Ash and then you have this as a follow-up or they don't have Ash and you miraculously draw the exact two cards you need so you don't need those cards. Uh, next uh, is other starter cards, Rabina, Eaglin. If you see these cards you are winning. Uh, if you see map you'll, you'll also be winning and other stuff like there's a lot of other card combos but for sure you know everyone knows you gotta see these cards. Uh, next up are the Rabina search targets. Three, two can, one and one, you don't need more. Good talk. All right, uh, these cards, similar package. Everyone should be playing this card. Rabina can add this card, and then if you already have access to Eaglin, this is why you would add it, so that way when you summon Eaglin, this can chain block, so then your deck never loses to Ash Blossom. And not only that, but this can also give you an extension, not only as a body, but it also gives you the steel spell that reduces the tribute summoning method by one. So essentially, this can become two bodies for your next follow-up tribute summon, as well as being a beat stick. Like this, uh, it in order, for decks to, in order for this deck to deal lethal to your opponent, uh, my one of my setups is like two M pens or Apex Avian M pen in this, so that way it's like 8100 damage. So this package is really important to play. You must play it because everyone is playing Ash Blossom. All right, if you are not playing it, you're silly. And these are the cards you search off of the uh, Eaglin. Uh, two M pens. I used to play one in a long time ago, but you got to play two because of the advent combos and uh, you can add this off a two can while Eaglin switches the first one and there's some like niche combos but you do definitely need two. Uh, three, three is definitely too much, uh, doesn't really come up uh, unless you get really bad RNG. Uh, one Apex Avian, one Mega Ryza. Uh, this deck has a lot of infinite resources especially because of Mega Ryza but once they hit the Mega Ryza you are uh, you lose out to the infinite resources that this deck is supposed to have, but yeah, every time you summon Mega Ryza, you're you are flipping your opponent's resources so much that it's like this card is the game ender for sure. Like every time this hits the four, you're supposed to give yourself a bit more momentum, and and it does this job. I, every time I summon this card, it was insane. I summoned this card three times in one turn today. Uh, once off a of normal summon, once off of the end pins, uh, once off the map to M-Pen summon, and then the other one to like with my Simark field spell to summon this, and I bounce this entire board and just one off of that. It's crazy. And this card also technically has more attack points. This only has 3,000 attack with the field spell. This is 3,100 attack, so this kind of came up one time to beat over a bear. Uh, yeah, next up are the consistency cards and cards that you add off of the M-Pen. Uh, three map, you know, what I can say, three advent. These are the best cards in the game. You gotta play them. Everyone's playing hand traps, and this deck surprisingly can play around hand traps because it has an, its own inherent way to dodge Book of Moon. This card has created a lot of three card combos, which can get you to double Dreaming Town, which you you must play two Dreaming Towns because this card's on field effect is not once per turn. Once you have all four birds in rotation, you gotta summon. You gotta manage your resources to, to if you have map out as well. You gotta like manage how many times you're summoning off of the birds, so you can go like, oh, I'm gonna summon two birds off of this one. I'm gonna summon one bird off of this, and I'm gonna summon one bird off of this, and then tribute summon for like the mega rises. You have like three times you can you can mega rise your opponent, or three times you can apex avian your opponent, or and especially the graveyard effect to flip your opponent's face uh, monsters face down. That's like another disruption for this deck. So this card is what keeps your deck stabilizes. And if your M-Pen gets negated and you have this and all the birds in rotation, you are stabilized. So you need to see this card, you need to search this card. Like, this card's the heart and soul of the deck for sure, along with the Rubina Eva. And then this card is the worst card in the deck. I hate this card. I, 
I wish I don't play it, but you have to play it for the mirror match, you know, if there is a mirror match. And like, it comes up in niche scenarios to beat monsters that are unaffected by activated effects. And it also comes up turn 3 and 4 where you have to put back the Eagle and Search targets to draw real cards. So, I hate this card, but everyone loves it apparently. Uh, those are all the main core cards. Like, all these cards here, you would probably never side out. Because they're all very important. And then these are like the tech options. I have room for 10. Feather Duster. Uh, everyone's playing in perm or back row cards. Skill Drain, TCP, you need to have at least one main deck out to back row. Call by the Grave, why is this card still legal? That's crazy. Two Book of Moons. Uh, this is an argument for three, but like, this card's good, but it's never good to draw multiples. So, it's not impactful by, by itself, but it does have a lot of flexibility. That's why I really love this card. Uh, but I didn't find myself needing the third. Uh, then these are the last major options that you always want to see. Three Ash Blossoms, three Dark Rulers. Every combo deck uh, besides Manadium loses this card essentially, so you have to play this card. It makes Prosperity and Duality even stronger, because otherwise you're not going to negate these pot spells if you don't play this card. So yeah, it, it, it's crazy. And then Ash Blossom, um, I was going to main deck I was going to main deck D-Shifter, but I felt like... like uh, if I think that there's more control matchups in the format, like like Welcome Labyrinth and like Brand, like I don't know, this is a lot of decks. This card is more impactful than D Shifter, currently. That's just why I decided to main deck it, and that's 40 cards. All uh, right, extra deck. So I need to say anything. I don't make any of these <laughs> cards. All right, cool, good talk. Uh, check out my article for the whole list if you didn't see it. Uh, next is a side deck. This is where the the most of the work came in. Uh, Dimension Shifter. I side deck this card because I don't think it's very good against most of the meta decks right now. Besides the combo decks that are what I think are rogue. So yeah, you have to play this because they exist, but I personally never needed this card and I never drew it today. I wish I drew it one time, but uh, or a couple times and it just never came up. So don't need this card. Uh, but it is what makes this deck broken, for sure. Uh, the other card that makes this deck broken, uh, Harpy's Feather Storm. You flip this card, you stack it on top of your deck of Ryza, you win. Like, TLDR, I don't know. Why is this, deck, why is this card still legal? Who knows? Uh, I wish this card was banned, so that way the, the Flumir becomes more fun. But, uh, yeah, this card is stupid. Um, it, uh, when it's destroyed, you also get to add Harpy's Feather Duster, so that's cool. Uh, next up, uh, Runic still exists. You have to play Cosmic Cyclone for Runic. Wow. Ah, that's like the only reason, like that's the only thing I have to respect is like combo and like Floodgates and Fountain, I think. Yeah, like like what, the best thing about this deck is that I don't actually have to waste side deck slots for like Gimmick Puppet Lock, Ibli Lock, Bestials, like because all the other decks that I try to build in this format, I have to like constantly play around those cards or like Triple Talons and this deck, Surprisingly, can play around everything, so like I have room for like this card, and it was fine. Like I drew this card, it was great. Uh, last couple slots. Uh, let's see, what should I talk about first? Uh, two lightning storms. Came up very clutch today. <laughs> yep, uh, just another way to beat mass. You have to respect control decks. That's all I gotta say. Uh, the attack one monster thing, it came up once, and it was good. I'm I'm glad. Like I, I kind of wish I played Rageki. Because this deck does kind of struggle with dealing with big monsters, unless you have Mega Ryza to spin them away while you have Dreaming Town set. But this came up, and this was fun. Uh, the last couple slots are the searchable DD Crow for the Branded and Mathmec matchup, and whatever, it came, it just good. Uh, the, the searchable Dark Simorg for the Labyrinth matchup, or any other control matchup, where if I go first, or yeah, I could just set this up on their my opponent's turn or my turn, and then they can't set their traps, and then I, I probably win. Uh, and these two ghost spells uh, to just be more respectful to Labyrinth because because they can they have a really good grinding grind game if they resolve their big welcome labyrinths and stuff. So you need more like this is just basically two more copies of Ash for that matchup. And it came up against Branded too where I, I stopped the fusion trap or something and it was kind of clutch. Um, yeah, other than that, like this card's kind of mid. But you have, to, uh, but two is a fine number for sure. Like two along with this, it's kind of like a three. But yeah, it was fine. Uh, overall, I'm gonna tell you what some what, what a lot of players will not tell you is you should try and play flu this format. A lot of players will tell you not to because they think this deck's irrelevant. 
yeah, barrier statue is gone, but like this deck has infinite resources. This deck doesn't care about Ibli. This deck, this deck doesn't care about gimmick puppet lock. It actually plays into hand traps kind of fine as long as you draw the right combination of cards. Like like when you draw the the, the, the combination of hands where you like, oh, well, I have the out to imperm, I have the out to ash blossom, and you you're able to get the stabilize of the dreaming town and the and M pen up. This deck is this deck will just steamroll any other deck because M pen makes my opponent not be able to kill me. It gives you longevity while also giving you follow-ups, and it's like the best wall in the game. Um, it's one of the key aspects to what, of what makes a really good top tier deck is longevity, as well as consistency. So yeah, I for sure uh, encourage everyone to try play this deck exactly the way I built it. You just have to practice all the combos and uh, know the siding patterns and stuff. But uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll probably see you guys all at Nats. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I'll play this deck, but yeah. And shout out to Kevin Paul. You know, he played a really good deck. His deck is like fire. It's, it's gas. Yeah.